Hey writer friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Holly. I'm a writer aspiring to be a published author. And in today's video, I have a very special guest with me, my sister, Heather. Hi. Hi. Also known as <laughs> Write Heather Venkat or Write Venkat on Instagram and Twitter. And we are gonna be talking all about alpha readers. We thought that this would be an interesting topic to talk about because we haven't seen anyone talk about alpha readers before. So we're gonna talk to you first about what alpha readers are, if there is a difference between alpha readers and critique partners, and the pros and cons that we found. So to me, an alpha reader is pretty similar to a critique partner. That is someone who you trust, who will read your manuscript before beta readers read it. That's why they're the alpha reader. They're reading your manuscript before other people are looking at it. Yeah, and so for me, I feel like critique partners are more so that person who really gives it a very critical eye. That's why they're called the critique partner. And the alpha reader is really reading it to enjoy it first off. So similar to a beta reader to see how much overall they like it, but their initial read through is not with that very critical eye. So when either one or both of us is drafting a manuscript, when we finish that chapter, we swap that chapter and share it with each other. So usually we'll just send an email and be like, hey, there's a new chapter out. Sometimes if we are Skyping and working on the manuscript at the same time and we finish the chapter in that time frame, we will actually share the screen so that we can be reading it together and seeing each other's reactions, which I think is really cool. Yeah, and for me, it is a lot of fun to do that because um, you can see someone's immediate reaction or I can see Holly's immediate reaction to my chapters which is, can be a good and a bad thing. <laughs> I think that's really important because what people want to see is that initial reaction like, are you going to be crying in this scene? Are you going to be shocked? Are you surprised by what's happening? Are you feeling the emotions that the author is trying to evoke? And I can't tell you how many times Holly has made me cry <laughs> while I'm reading one of her chapters in real time. And Ditto. <laughs> I can be a little evil sometimes. We like being evil in my books. <laughs> By the way, she is the queen of chapter cliffhangers, so usually when I read the chapter, I'm like, can I just finish <laughs> reading the whole book, please? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it also can be a little bit intimidating, though, too, because even though I know, I mean, Holly and I grew up together, so it's a little bit of a different dynamic because it's like I can share anything with her. But regardless, what I feel like is sometimes I do want to wait to share the chapter with her because I feel like it's so bad <laughs> and I want it to be good for her. But I know that it actually motivates me to know that she is looking forward to it. And then when she does read the chapter and she has these certain reactions, it really drives me to keep writing um, because I was like, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Or, you know, regardless, it you know, she'll only say the good things that she notices, saving some of those things that she might, you know, because while I'm writing it, I say, oh my goodness, I overused <laughs> this word a lot, but I'm just trying to get the words out. And so while she's reading, I'm like, I know she's probably noticing those <laughs> things, but she doesn't mention them at all, which makes it that much better to share the chapter with her because that initial reaction is only the good stuff. Yeah, so pretty recently fresh in my mind is NaNoWriMo. I was a Nano Rebel, so I was editing the Celestial Code's third draft and <clears throat> Heather was working on a first draft. So she was only sharing her first chapters with me. So it was a little bit one-sided and that was like the first time that we ever did that because last year we both drafted a new novel. But so that's the difference between that critique partner is that you can bounce ideas off of your critique partner in the outlining phase before you're even drafting. Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think about this? But we don't really do that. Like, it's interesting that we like kind of like throw all our advice at each other like after the fact. Like Heather said, like I kind of had some ideas in my mind as I was reading her uh, NaNoWriMo novel, Crossing the Rubicon, which is amazing, by the way, and the world needs that novel. Um, but that's, Aww. that's, a, that's a story for an, another time, right? That's a story for another time, like another video. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the important thing for crossing the Rubicon is that like I did not know what was going to happen the whole time. Like I was stumped. Like it's not like she had bounced ideas off of me. Hey, I'm thinking about doing this plot twist. Like, do you feel like it's 
you know, woven craftfully throughout the novel. She waited until afterwards, you know, like I had to read the whole thing to like find out all of these twists and turns that she had throughout the novel, which like made it so much more enjoyable for me. And so that's what the difference between the alpha reader is like, we're not bouncing ideas off of each other. Like we do it after we read that first draft. And I really like that because with the Celestial Code, like I had that idea in my mind for years and I didn't tell her the premise of it until she read that first draft. And so she kind of had some ideas of like what it was going to be about because I had given some hints here and there, but she didn't really know because I'm like, I want to see your initial reaction to this. Like I want it to be a surprise. And I think that that's like the funnest thing about having an alpha reader. Like we know little bits here and there, like the blurbs, mm -hmm. like kind of like the general premise of the story and maybe like the, a main character or two, but we really don't know what it's gonna be about until we read it. And I think it was important that you said like, not like we are not looking at each other's first drafts with that critical eye, but it's really gonna help us because like, people say you're too close to your manuscript. And so it's kind of like you have extra help when you're editing that first draft to prepare it for beta readers because you're having someone that already read it as opposed to you like finishing the first draft, taking a couple weeks off as a break, and then going back into it and like trying to figure out what's, you know, what things you want to change. Like I gave her like, you know, maybe a page, yeah, like a, page. a word document pages worth of notes about you know with a, a couple examples of things that i thought that she could tweak and work on for really the first helpful. draft yeah things i think it's important for the alpha reader to give that feedback after the first draft you're just not reading it and then just being like okay it's done like willy-nilly like you're you're reading it so that you can like see that person person's initial reactions in the moment know that you're on the right track so that's what we'll do like mm -hmm. even during NaNoWriMo like I'm like was that chapter good like and I remember with the Celestial Code last year there was this one chapter where I was like that scene was that too info dumpy which I cut and then at, when I gave the second draft to betas, they said it was too info dumpy, so I cut it again. And no one said it was info dumpy in the third draft. So I was like, yes, I got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that is important to think about too with alpha readers is that they don't have to be the end all be all opinion because I didn't tell her that a certain chapter was info dumpy, but then the beta readers caught that and I agreed with it. Um, and so sometimes, even though I'm reading it to enjoy it, um, you know, I definitely want to give her feedback, but it's also first and foremost to enjoy it and give her that uh, sort of motivation and initial affirmation that, okay, I'm on the right track right. with the feelings that I want to evoke in the reader. And, you know, and then the other stuff can come later. There will be so many opportunities for people to look at your novel with that more critical eye. Yes. If there's something glaring or blaring, like, yeah, I'll tell you. Right. Like, but, you know, on the outright, it's mostly going to be, it's kind of those, it's kind of like the big picture stuff. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah, it's mostly the big picture stuff. Yeah, so I'm never doing like line edits when I'm reading, like, you don't do that for a first draft. You don't do that for a second draft. Sometimes you don't do it for the third draft either. So it's usually those big picture things that I look at. And the other thing that, I do as an alpha reader while I'm reading, and, and she does for me, is we, as we're going along the way, we want to make sure we're on the right track, but that also includes like plot holes because wouldn't that suck if you're like, you know, just starting out or you're nearing the end and then you're like, oh my God, like I didn't catch this plot hole. Like, and so that's something that we look at too, to make sure that yeah, you're not being steered the wrong direction and wasting time and wasting words. And then I also like what you said about like the motivation too, because then it's like, yeah, that kind of gives that picture in your mind that like, hey, this is for the readers. This is why I'm doing this so that other people can enjoy it. You know, when you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, like your alpha reader can kind of help put that into perspective for you. I think one of the reasons why we started doing this was because, I mean, when we were younger, we would always read each other's work. We would always be writing. And then when we got older and started writing fan fiction, that was uh, much longer. And we would just write for the fun of it and share it with each other. So once we actually became really serious about writing and said, oh, we really want to become published, not just writing for ourselves, then we still kept that sharing because we have that bond and we know that we can trust each other to not just 
tear each other apart. <laughs> um, or steal each other's work. <laughs> right, and it's really interesting though that we have such different ideas, but yes. um, I feel like we have never bounced ideas back and forth with each other in the kind of plotting and planning phase, but I feel like maybe in the future it would be really cool to do like a collab book, kind of like um, I don't know, Jay, Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, yes. or I know there's a lot, a lot of people who've done that. I would love to do that, co-author twins, like, because <laughs> then I think our ideas could really create something interesting. Yeah, I think that's interesting because with any of her novels, I always tell her like, I could not have come up with that. Like, it just blows my mind. I'm like, wow, like I would not have thought that. So <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, even though we're twins and like we kind of have the same line of thinking, we are very different in our creative like processes too. So I think that if you are interested in getting an alpha reader for yourself, um, I do think first and foremost, it does have to be natural. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's someone who you already kind of bounce ideas back and forth and you can kind of talk to them about maybe waiting until you start your novel and sharing chapter by chapter. Sometimes that could be a close friend, maybe even a family member, um, just someone who it, you feel like it would be really easy to do that with and that you can trust mm -hmm. uh, for sure. That's the first and foremost uh, important thing. Yeah, so, you know, maybe you found someone who you think would be a cr good critique partner, but, you know, maybe they would actually make a better alpha reader. And then the other thing, too, is just making sure that, you know, that person is going to give you good feedback because we all know family and friends can be not critical at all and just say, oh, it's beautiful, it's rainbows and sunshine and it's perfect and <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, I just think back to The Celestial Code when I finished that first draft and I was like, wow, I feel pretty confident about this draft. Like, I'm not really going to have to make many changes at all. And here I am a year later, like, scrambling to finish this fourth draft, which hopefully by the time this video goes up, I will have finished it. But anyways, I just thought that was funny that, like, in my head, I'm like, oh, it's, yeah, that's pretty good. And then I'm like, no, it needs a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But I think the important thing with that is being upfront with the person that you're talking about because the alpha reader isn't really supposed to say all of those critical things right away. Yes. But if you tell them, hey, you know, I just want you to, to enjoy this and maybe give me some big picture feedback. But at the end, save all of those things so that when I go to edit the first draft, you know, then I can take your feedback. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, you're not confusing their positive feedback with them just pretending. So we've been talking a lot about the pros and we forgot to talk about the cons. <laughs> but I guess it's because there's not really any cons, like at least for us, like we know that we can trust each other. We know the process of what an alpha reader is. And so we understand it and it works. And so I think that's the only con is just that like, if they are critiquing everything right away or, you know, they're asking you for more information and you know, you can't give that right away. And I think probably like the biggest and really only con that there is, is something that was kind of going through Heather's head that she mentioned earlier that like, she was kind of scared sometimes to like share the chapter because she's like, oh, she's gonna hate it. I know that there are all these things wrong. So, but I was so adamant with her, like this is a first draft. I know, like every first draft is bad. My first drafts are bad. You know, we're at different stages in the writing process in our writer journeys. Like I'm not judging you at all, like not at mm -hmm. all. So it's just knowing that like, send that chapter to the other person, send that chapter because like, they're not gonna judge you. Yeah, and if you're if you're feeling a little bit apprehensive, you could always batch a couple, two to three chapters, and then send it to them later. Um, I think the most important thing is don't let that kind of slow you down from writing or prevent you from writing. For the end of Wings, I hadn't really fleshed out a lot of details that I really should have. So then when I got to that point in the novel, I thought I told Holly, well. <laughs> I know I need to send you each chapter, but I'm going to just finish it and send you like the last, like, I don't know, three chapters or something like that because I need to work through this on my own. And that's perfectly fine. All right, you guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am so excited to share this content with you guys. Let me know in the comments down below any questions um, that we may have missed that you have about alpha readers or about our processes as alpha readers. Please give this video a thumbs up to support my channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.
We did it. We did it. It's the morning. Coffee. I gotta go to work. Coffee. Coffee. Oh, I don't want to go. I was crying earlier, so sorry if my <laughs> eyes were red. This might not even make it in the bloopers because 